if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. Well, it wouldn't be a passive income video without a quote from Big Waza, would it? But before we get into any of that, let me say this. Passive income is a lie. You are fake news. Money for nothing. It's not real. I'm giving away free money. Nobody gives you money for not doing anything. It's a ridiculous notion. Forget anything anyone ever told you about this being a real thing. Fairy dust, it doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not real. Nobody hands over their hard earned cash to you for you doing zero for them. There's this fantasy that gets pushed around YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, pretty much every social media platform there is, that there is this utopia of infinite wealth for anyone who wants it. Just reach out and take it and all your dreams come true. Riches beyond your wildest dreams there are to be claimed. It's all nonsense, all of it are. Time is money after all. You see job adverts offering £8 an hour or £10 an hour or 30000 a year. You get paid to turn up to do a job for someone else and you get compensated for your time. Your ability to earn is directly related to your skills and how much time you're prepared to give to somebody else to do that job. Passive income is this notion that you can separate your earning potential from your time. You can start to make some money somehow without having to continuously trade your time for it. I'd much rather refer to this as continuous cash flow rather than passive income because I can tell you as sure as snowballs will melt in hell, you won't be getting this money for just lying on your back. So with that rather inconvenient fact in mind, let's get right into it. Check out this rather unfortunate tweet from Side Hustle King. Would you rather get paid $1 million right now or £50 a month for the rest of your life? Poor dude who came up with this got his maths wrong, but the idea of having regular streams of cash all chipping into the same pot is at least along the right lines. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to call this continuous cash flow passive income. It's what most people are used to hearing, and to be honest, it's probably much more palatable. So passive income comes after having front-loaded some kind of enterprise, either by putting money into something up front, or having spent the time to create or build something in advance. Having done the hard work up front, now the fruits of your labor arrive with a varying degree of maintenance and upkeep going forwards. In a few minutes, I'll get into the forms of continuous cash flow or passive income that I have going on, but let me tell you the difference between this and the dream you are being sold where you literally have to do almost nothing to become rich beyond your wildest dreams. Scammers and snake oil salesmen on the internet are selling passive income schemes and courses where anyone with zero experience and zero startup money can make thousands of dollars online just by following their system. How you can make $100,000 in one single day you're probably going to be a little bit shocked when you realize how straightforward it is to do this and possibly a little bit annoyed that it's taken you so long to discover it. And if you're somebody who's looking for a way to either pay off your bills or produce a decent second or primary income, I really encourage you to get started. I mean, if anything, I'm underselling it. Well, let me tell you, if I had a system as good as that, I certainly wouldn't be sharing it with anyone. If you want something truly passive and truly sustainable, something that will produce continuous cash flow, then you need to either be getting your money to make money for you through investments in something like the stock market or real estate, or you spend time creating something and then having a low maintenance way of getting that thing to bring you income. Something like writing an ebook or a blog or creating YouTube videos. Something digital like this has the potential to continue to make you money over time because a greater audience doesn't necessarily mean extra work for you. It's very scalable. People come to read or watch what you have created. You've built it once, it's done, it requires no more input from you and there is an unlimited number of people in the world potentially to use what you're offering. It's why those make millions in passive income courses sell so well. They aren't making their money because they have some great insight into the world of passive income. They make their money because there is no shortage of people wanting to pack their job in and live an easy life. So these products always have a market. Twitter courses are another similar sort of thing. A guy writes an ebook on how to grow and sell on Twitter, stuffs it full of generic advice and sells it for $39. Someone looking to do exactly that, to grow and sell on Twitter for passive income, forks out the money. But it's something of a bonus, and this is generally known up front. If you leave a five star review for the book, then you can become an affiliate for the author. He will give you half the sale of $39 for bringing a new customer. Pretty good. So now the author has incentivized a customer to say how good the ebook is. 
and the original buyer only has to find two more people to buy that book to get his money back. Anything beyond finding two people to buy this book from you is pure profit. Meanwhile, the guy at the top, that's the author in this scenario, starts to post screenshots of how many sales he is making and all the five star reviews he's getting for this ebook to show people how his techniques work. But they don't necessarily work. All he's done is sell a few ebooks, which is different than objectively looking at the quality and the information in this ebook. Anyway, sales breed more sales. So this cements his position as a winner with social proof to boot. And soon he has hundreds of people marketing his 20 page fluff fest to get half the sale and it all works out because everyone fresh to Twitter wants to make some money. It's beautiful in many ways. So now the point I have been trying to get to here is whether you like this or not, the guy at the top has put in a lot of work up front to position himself as the front runner in this spam festival. But to be fair, he has worked at it. Nothing passive about that part. Now after front loading all the work, because his reputation is so good, his income is disproportionately high compared to the work he has to do to maintain this regular income. Gorgeous, continuous cash flow, passive income. It's a simple idea and looks great on paper and people can see the results very publicly. Get something going, sit back and watch the cash pour in. But all they're seeing is the end product. The hard work part is the part that anyone trying to sell you anything doesn't want to tell you about. So look, that's one way to get some continuous cash flow coming in, but I hope you can come up with a better digital product than that. So here are my six ways I am bringing continuous cash flow in. The first is YouTube. It's probably the least passive of all in this list, actually. My channel became monetized with AdSense about this time last year, and as my subs grew, the views came in, then I hit the 1,000 subs and 4,000 hours of watch time required to monetize a YouTube channel. So now, when you want to watch a video on my YouTube channel, you will be served up a small advertisement before it starts. If you watch something like 30 seconds, I think I get paid a tiny little bit. So to be honest, my monthly income from AdSense isn't that great, but I'm working on, I'm hoping to triple it by the end of this year. But nevertheless, making a few quid from advertisements on my videos is nice. I've been making these videos anyway. So from that point of view, it's passive because it requires no extra effort on my part. Apart from setting it up in the first place, but once those videos are created, they can sit there forever, continuing to bring views and add revenue for as long as people keep coming to see that content. One of my videos has amassed nearly 100,000 views over time. I'll leave a link in the description to it below, but there is that kind of obligation to keep topping up your content to keep the whole thing moving along. Second form of cash flow is investing. So I invest in the stock market, mostly through index funds. Over many, many decades, the stock market has been shown to hold the key to enormous long-term gains for those patient enough to get started and wait. Suffice to say, I am investing as much as I can into the market these days. And in return for putting in my capital up front, I can sit back and be patient and all things being equal, enjoy some serious growth over the long term. An average of around 8 to 10% per year over the last 100 years or so is what gives me the confidence that this is a worthwhile long-term move. Even better, I invest in a tax-free ISA, so there's no tax to be paid on all those dividends and all that growth for as long as you hold those stocks and there's no tax to pay on cashing out. Wonderful. One of the best things about investing in this day and age is that there is an incredibly low barrier to entry. It's not what it used to be. Investing is no longer the preserve of the rich and fancy. You can get started with a pound with some apps, you can also buy fractional shares too. So if you wanted to buy Amazon stock and you don't have two and a half, three thousand dollars, then you can buy a tenner's worth or a five pounds worth or whatever you can afford. And even if you aren't confident about what you're doing, there's companies like Invest Engine offering really affordable amounts to accounts with small fees. I'll link to that video below if you want to know a little bit more about them and how to get started. Affiliate marketing. So this is basically being paid by a business to bring a new customer to their front door. So it's a little bit like the Twitter story I told earlier on, but hopefully with a half decent product. So the process goes that you would recommend something to a potential customer. That customer buys something and as a thank you, the business gives you a small slice of that sale. That's typically how it goes. 
Affiliate marketing is a great fit for me, a combination of my interest in investing and creating content around investing on YouTube and on my blog means I have some quality companies that I can affiliate for. Since I'm already doing the work to get that content onto YouTube and I'm already writing articles on the blog, it wasn't a lot of extra effort to include some links. I've managed to forge some good relationships with a couple of investing platforms I use. Trading212 and Invest Engine are a couple of my favorites. I think they're good products and as I make content to help people make choices around investing. I include my affiliate links for those services. I've been doing a lot of work in this area on YouTube, so I'm starting to become a bit of a familiar face for better or for worse for anyone looking for information on these products. You can't make people click links, but creating this content means that people are naturally going to find it eventually and clicking links is a nice way for people to show their appreciation for the information that they got and it doesn't cost them anything. Further, there's generally some kind of improvement on a standard sign up offer if you go through an affiliate. Affiliate marketing is really booming. It's, it's one of the most popular ways for people to monetize their blogs or Twitter or Instagram because it costs just about nothing to get started. You promote products you enjoy using on your blog or Instagram. Keep your integrity while you do it and it's a great way to make some money while bringing value to others at the same time. Unfortunately, a lot of folks go about it entirely the wrong way and fail without really ever getting going. Often it's because they promote sketchy things or products that have nothing to do with their niche. I have another video on the channel, sort of a, an introduction to affiliate marketing. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Rentals. So if affiliate marketing has a low barrier to entry, then at the other end of the getting started scale, I have rental property. I kind of fell into it through a series of life events. Obviously to get started with a rental requires significant upfront capital, but this goes way back to 2004 when I bought my first property. I grew up, got married, started a family and all that stuff, but I managed to keep the first flat I ever had and I found a tenant for it. I now pay a management company to look after all the tenant related issues and I pretty much have nothing to do with it in terms of hands on stuff. Sure, it cost me a bit more money to do it this way but to have a manager experienced in all things rental and with good contacts for repairs, maintenance and so on, well let's just say that hassle free approach more than makes up for the money spent here. To be honest, it's not actually that much. It's around 10% of the rent, so it's money well spent as far as I'm concerned. So I take whatever's left over after tax and all that sort of stuff and I just plow them back into my ISA investments. It's money making more money. That's the whole point of this building up streams of passive income after all. Of course, the asset, the flat, is still there this whole time and it will have been appreciating in value over the years. There will come a day when I will sell up, but today is not that day. The cash flow right now is just better for me. What about some passive side hustling? So I'm a programmer by profession and in the past I have taken on some projects for startup companies to help them with different parts of their IT stuff. But unfortunately due to NDAs and such, I can't really talk about who they were or what they're doing. But suffice to say that when negotiating for the work, rather than being paid up front, I have asked for a tiny piece of the company going forward instead. Generally speaking, in my experience, startups and other young businesses have generally been open to this because it saves them the capital up front and they only have to pay me if and when they become successful. In many ways, they risk nothing by doing it this way and all it has cost me personally is a little bit of my time. Some of those businesses have become more successful than others and now I get paid a little bit each month instead of a one-time hit and it's done. Further, since I'm already invested in this company's success, then they're more likely to come back to me in the future because they know I'm now incentivized to do a good job the next time they need me to do some work. Credit card perks is another way I'm getting a little bit extra. So credit cards get a terrible reputation among the finance crowd, but I really think they are quite amazing tools. The credit card, I mean, not the crowd that don't like them. Credit card companies want you to rack up loads and loads of debt and pay crazy interest on that debt, while the whole time they're trying to sweeten the deal for you with attractive looking cashback or Hermes or other perks just for using their cards. Well, far from racking up expensive credit card debt, I just use my credit card as normal for everything from grocery shopping to paying bills to buying bus tickets. I pay the balance off each and every month in full, not spending anything more than I would ordinarily have and just quietly clocking up Hermes that are going to get me a cheap holiday when it's convenient to travel again. Combine this with cashback sites when you're buying pretty much anything online and there's this nice little passive pot building in the background and it's all just for spending as you would have done anyway. You simply don't get these sorts of benefits with paying cash and here in the UK there are some extra consumer protections when you're paying with credit cards so for me personally there isn't really much of a downside here at all. 
So that's six streams, but what about a seventh? Well, hopefully this year we are going to be opening a holiday let in Bush Mills here in Northern Ireland. We bought this property last year and while it has been an absolute blast spending time in it and using it for the last year or so, I am excited to begin creating another stream of continuous cash flow with this property. Granted, this will probably need a bit of time and effort to get into the swing of things, but with all the work very nearly done, we are getting close to getting an agent to look after it, getting all the support in place and kicking off this brand new adventure. And 100% you can guarantee I will be making some content around this. In the meantime, if you are interested in getting moving with setting up some streams of passive income, why don't you check out this video and getting started with affiliate marketing.